Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. We are going to discuss the vaginal birth after cesarean from RCOG guideline. Okay, so first of all, we will discuss what is the recommended schedule of antenatal care for a pregnant woman with a previous cesarean delivery. Okay, about this, in the guideline, it's written that implementation of the vaginal birth after previous cesarean delivery versus elective repeat cesarean suction checklist or clinical care pathway is recommended to facilitate best practice in the antenatal counseling share decision making and documentation now which women are suitable to have plan b back plan b back is appropriate for and may be offered to the majority of women with single term pregnancy of cephalic presentation at 37 plus weeks or beyond who have had a single previous lower segment cesarean delivery with or without a history of previous vaginal birth now what are the contraindications to v back Plan VBAC is contraindicated in women with a previous uterine rupture or classical cesarean scar and in the women who have other absolute contraindication to vaginal birth that apply irrespective of the presence or absence of the scar, for example, major placenta previa. Now, in the woman with a complicated uterine scar, caution should be exercised and decision should be made on case-by-case -case basis by senior obstetrician with access to detail of the previous surgery. Can a woman with a two or more prior cesareans be offered plan B back? Women who have had two or more prior lower segment cesarean deliveries may be offered V back after counseling by a senior obstetrician. This should include the risk of uterine rupture and maternal morbidity and the likelihood of successful V back given a history of prior vaginal delivery. Labor should be conducted in a center with a suitable expertise and recourse to immediate surgical delivery. Now, important figures after two cesarean sections. Success rate is 71.1%. Uterine rupture risk is 1.36, ranges 0.9 to 1.8%. Hysterectomy risk is 56 per 10,000 compared to 19 per 10,000 in case of previous one cesarean section. Blood transfusion risk is 2% as compared to 1.2% in case of previous one cesarean section. Now, percentage risk of uterine rupture. We are going to discuss that. Plan B back. 0.5%, 1 in 200, previous 2 C section. Uh, rupture risk is 0.9 to 1.8%. Previous uterine rupture risk is 5%. Previous classical score. Overall risk is high, but limited data about the exact percentage. Okay, now the risk of the perinatal mortality with the rupture uterus, a review of literature found that 5% of the symptomatic uterine ruptures were associated with the perinatal mortality. Reference historic article about the uterine rupture. Basically, I have compiled these percentages from the authentic sources like uh, RCOG guidelines. Okay, uh, so uh, it's very important to memorize this table about the percentage risk of uterine rupture because exam questions might come related to the percentages. Now, what factors increase the risk of uterine rupture? Short interpregnancy, interdelivery interval less than 12 months since the last delivery, posted pregnancy, maternal age of 40 years or more, obesity, lower pre labor, bishop score, macrosomia, decreased ultrasonographic lower segment, myometrial thickness. Now, what is the role of myometrial thickness? Myometrial thickness, the minimum thickness overlying the amniotic cavity at the level of the uterine scar that a cutoff of 2.1 to 4 millimeter provided a strong negative predictive value for the occurrence of uterine defect using VBAC, whereas a myometrium thickness cutoff between 0.6 to 2 mm provided a strong positive predictive value for the occurrence of uterine defect. Now, what are the overall aims of antenatal counseling? The antenatal counseling of a woman with a previous cesarean birth should be documented in the nose. A final decision for the mood of the birth should be agreed upon by the woman and members of maternity team before the expected planned date of delivery. When a date of uh, ERCS is being arranged, a plan for the event of labor starting before the scheduled date should be documented in the notes. The routine use of VBAC checklists during antenatal counseling should be considered as they are uh, they would ensure informed consent and shared decision making in the woman uh, undergoing VBAC. 10% of the woman plan for ERCS goes into labor before 39 weeks of gestation. One in four is the chance of acquiring emergency cesarean during VBAC. 
What is the likelihood of the VBAC success? Success um, rate after previous IOL uh, BMF 30 is 40 percent. Success rate after previous labor dy dystocia is 64 percent. Success rate after previous one cesarean section is 72 to 75 percent. Success rate after pre previous fetal distress is 73%. Success rate after previous uh, malpresentation is 84%. Women with one or more previous vaginal births should be informed that the previous vaginal delivery, particularly previous VBAC, is a single best predictor of successful VBAC and is associated with a planned VBAC success, success rate of 85 to 90%. Previous vaginal delivery is also independently associated with a reduced risk of uterine rupture. Now, factors that are associated with the success of VBAN, greater maternal height, maternal age less than 40 years, BMI less than 30, gestational age less than 40 weeks, infant birth weight less than 4 kg or similar lower birth weight than the index cesarean delivery, what delivery setting is appropriate for conducting planned VBAN? Women should be advised that the planned VBAC should be conducted in a suitably stuffed and equipped delivery suit with a continuous intrapartum care and monitoring with the resources available for immediate cesarean delivery and advanced uh, neonatal resuscitation. Women and unplanned Women with an unplanned labor and a history of previous cesarean delivery should have a discussion with an experienced obstetrician to determine the feasibility of VBAC. Now, epidural analgesia is not contraindicated in a planned VBAC, although an increasing requirement for the pain relief in the labor should raise awareness for the possibility of an impending uterine rupture. Women should be advised to have continuous electronic fetal monitoring for the duration of the planned VBAC commencing at the onset of the regular uterine contraction. How should women with a previous cesarean birth be advised in relation to induction or augmentation of the labor? Women should be informed of the 2 to 3 fold uh, increased risk of uterine rupture and around 1.5 fold increased risk of cesarean delivery in induced or augmented labor com uh, compared with a spontaneous VBAC labor. A senior obstetrician should discuss the following with a woman the decision to induce labor, the proposed method of induction, the decision to augment labor with oxytocin, the time intervals for the serial vaginal examination, and selected parameter of the progress that would necessitate discontinuing VBAC. Clinicians should be aware that induction of the labor using mechanical methods and neotomy or Foley's catheter is associated with a lower risk of scar rupture compared with induction using the prostaglandin. What elements are involved in the perioperative, intraoperative and postoperative care for elective repeat cesarean section? Elective repeat cesarean uh, section delivery should be conducted after 39 weeks of gestation. Antibiotic, preferably ciprofloxacin and metronidazole should be administered before making the skin in CN in women undergoing elective repeat C-section. All women undergoing elective repeat C-section should receive thromboprophylaxis according to the existing RCOG guideline new 2015. Early recognition of placenta previa, adopting a multidisciplinary approach and informed consents are important consideration in the management of the woman with the placenta previa and previous cesarean delivery. And if patients wants to be back and has not gone into labor, we can wait for up to 41 to 42 weeks of gestation. How should women in special circumstances be cared for? Clinicians should be aware that there is uncertainty about the safety and efficacy of the plan we back in pregnancies complicated by post date twins gestation, fetal macrosomia, antepartum, stillbirths, or, or maternal age of 40 years or more. Hence, cautious approach is advised if we back is being considered in such circumstances. Women who are preterm and considering the option for the birth after previous uh, cesarean delivery should be informed that the planned VBAC, planned um, preterm VBAC has a similar success rates to the planned term VBAC, but with a lower rate of uterine rupture. Okay, now this chart is also very important. I have taken it from uh, the same RCG guideline about VBAC. And in this chart, um, the maternal outcomes in the planned VBAC and ERCS are explained. Okay, so if um, uh, a patient is having the planned VBAC, there is 72 to 75% chance of successful VBAC if successful shorter hospital stay and uh, recovery. 
okay so it means that that is um, a big advantage of the um plan v bank now approximately 0.5% of risk of uterine scar rupture if it occurs associated with metal and morbidity and uh, fetal morbidity and mortality okay so although there is a risk of maternal and fetal morbidity and mortality but the thing is that uh, the risk is very low so that is again another advantage of plan b back now another advantage is that there is increase in likelihood of the future uh, vaginal birth if the patient undergoes the plan uh, v back and the risk of the anus fascia injury in the woman with undergoing v back is 5% and the birth weight uh, is the strongest predictor of this and the rate of the instrumental delivery is also increased up to 39% okay so, so there is 5% increased risk of the fascia injuries and uh, 39% increased risk of the instrumental delivery and the risk of the maternal death with the uh, plan v back is of 4 per uh, 100000 okay that figure is also very important there is a eligible risk of the maternal death as well and obstetric anesthesia as well so these two are are disadvantages of plan b back now we, when we talk about ercs from 39 weeks patient is able to plan a non delivery of the date in selected patients okay this may however change based on the circumstances surrounding the maternal and fetal well being in the antenatal period okay so one advantage is that um, the delivery date can be planned okay and the second advantage is that virtually avoids the risk of the uterine rupture and actually the risk is extremely low less than 0.02% okay if the we are waiting for uh, elective repeat c section till 39 weeks there is a very small risk 0.02% Uh, of the uterine rupture as compared to 0.5 percent in case of the V bag. So these are two main advantages of ERCS. Uh, but the disadvantage is that is there is a longer recovery. Okay, and uh, another advantage is that basically you have written advantages and disadvantages um, side by side, and um, they have uh, not. Uh, Uh, separated advantages and disadvantages but anyway uh, it reduces the risk of the pelvic organ prolapse and urinary incontinence in comparison with the number of the vaginal birth and dose response effect at least in the short term now option for the sterilization if fertility is no longer desired evidence suggests that the uh, regret rate is higher and that the failure uh, pregnancy may be higher than that from the um Failure rate from sterilization associated with pregnancy may be higher than that from the internal procedure. If sterilization is to be performed at the same time as uh, cesarean delivery, counseling and the agreement should have been uh, at least two weeks prior to procedure. And future pregnancy is likely requires cesarean delivery, increased risk of the placenta previa greater, and adherence with the successive cesarean deliveries and abdominal surgery. So that is another disadvantage. That is, there there are increased risk of the more readily adherent placenta in case of elective repeat C section and the in the future of pregnancy the likelihood of um, um another cesarean section is increased okay and the risk of the maternal death with the ERCS of 13 per 100000 okay 95% confident in confidence interval now uh, we are talking about the infant outcome in case of the plan we back the risk of the transit uh, Uh, respiratory morbidity is two to three percent, ten per hundred thousand, irrespective of the prospective of anti partum stillbirth beyond thirty nine weeks while awaiting spontaneous labour, similar to the neglectless woman. Eight per ten thousand risk of HIE and four per ten thousand risk of delivery related perinatal death, and this is comparable to the risk of the neglectless woman in the labour. Now, in elective LSCS, the risk of the uh, transit respiratory morbidity of four to five percent, six percent risk of delivery is performed at thirty-eight weeks instead of thirty-nine, and the risk is reduced with antenatal corticosteroid. But there are concerns about potential long-term adverse effects. Okay, and another thing is that less than one per ten thousand zero. Uh, 0.01% risk of delivery related perinatal death or hie now clinical features associated with uterine rupture the cardinal signs of imminent uterine rupture are worsening ctg changes especially prolonged variable or late deceleration 66 to 76 percent of the cases hematuria secondary arrest small amount of vaginal bleeding pain over the scar um which persists between the contractions 
ओके नाउ लेट अस डिस्कस द साइंस ऑफ द यूट्राइन रपचर साइंस और फीटल ब्रेडिकार्डिया अपर डिस्प्लेसमेंट ऑफ द प्रेजेंटिक बार्ड सडन लॉस ऑफ द कंट्रैक्शन मेटर्नल हाई प्रोटेंशन हैवी विजनल ब्लीडिंग एंड एबडोमिनल और शोल्डर पेन ओके नाउ वी हैव यूट्राइन रपचर ब्लड ट्रांसफ्यूजन एंड मेटर्नल मॉर्टेलिटी of v back and ercs okay so in v back the uh, risk of uterine rupture is 0.5% or 1 in 200 and in elective repeat c section it is less than 0.02% blood transfusion uh, risk in case of the v back is 2% and it is 1% in case of elective repeat c section maternal mortality risk is uh, that is the 100000 4 in 100000 uh in v back and um, in case of the uh, like if repeat c section it is 13 per 100000 now obstetric anesthesia injury risk if v back is done is uh, that is 5% but uh, obstetric anesthesia injury if v back plus instrumental delivery is done that is 39% now coming to the respiratory uh, morbidity in case of the view back it is 2 to 3% in case of elective repeat section it is 4 to 6% still birth risk in case of the view back is 10 to uh, 10 per 10000 and it is not applicable in case of the elective repeat section hie risk in case of the view back is 8 per 10000 and it is less than 1 per 10000 case of elective repeat section now uh, we are talking about the risk of placenta previa depending upon the number of previous cesarean section in case of previous one cesarean section the risk of placenta previa is 1% in case of two um, previous cesarean section the risk is 1.7% in case of previous three cesarean section the risk is 2.8% now in case of the um uh, when we talk about the risk of placenta accreta in case of previous one cesarean section the risk is 11 to 14% in case of previous two c sections the risk is 23 to 40% in case of previous cesarean section the risk is 67% this chart is from gtg a uh, gtg about uh, uh this we back guideline but when we talk about the latest guideline gtg placenta previa the risks are a little bit different um along with one cesarean section the risk is 3% along with two cesarean section the risk is 11% along with three cesarean section the risk is 40% four cesarean section 61% five or more cesarean section 67% but um, <coughs> both are correct both are from uh, gtgs but as this placenta previa guideline is the latest so we can memorize these figures okay thank you so much that was the brief description about the uh, vaginal birth after cesarean section guideline and uh, i have tried my best to highlight the important point so as to make it uh, easy for you in few minutes time thank you so much allah